Bible in Matthew chapter 28 verse 11 to uh, sorry uh, chapter 11 verses 28 to 29 or we will uh, make it up to 30 okay so the title of our preaching today not as the one which is flagged but the title is we have peace when we have the Prince of Peace. So I hope uh, you don't hear this preaching from me because we we usually what we call this we usually put our sermons in the video so it should not be repetitive. But even though let us read that verse and once again we need to stand up as for the reverence of God through the reading of His words. In chapter 11 verses 29 to 30, 28 to 30, says, Come to me, all who labor and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day as you feed us with your words. Jesus, as you are here before, you told everyone who are heavily laden to come to you. Let it be that your words is spoken before, your inerrant and infallible words encourage us, teach us to come to you as we are in heavily laden. Lord, whatever circumstances we have now, we need to realize that you can take care of us and you can help us. Let it be that these words will be an encouragement for every one of us, and we we walk according to your uh, according to what you want us to walk, a pleasing walk in your sight. This is all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So have your. We have peace when we have the Prince of Peace. In social media or in everyone, a lot of people they pretend they are at peace. Or they think that really they are really in a peaceful life. Now in ESB, it says there that I will give you rest. Rest is, uh, can be translated also as peace. Kapayapaan. Let us examine for this three verses. In verse 28, Jesus called everyone to come. That is in verse 28. So Jesus, as the Prince of Peace, He called everyone to come to Him. The next question is, Who is that everyone? Come to me all. And I said, all that who are, I think in your Bible it says, Sa Tagalog ay nabibigatan, nahihirapan. At bibigyan ko kayo ng kapahingahan. Peace. Kapahingahan is also for kapayapaan. So two things we can see that Jesus called everyone and that everyone who are who are labor, labor and heavily laden. And we can also look at that He said he will give, I will give you 
rest. So I think and I believe this is very easy for us to understand. These are the realities of to this life. Peace is so important for us, or rest, then we can distinguish that there are two types of rest. There is two kinds, I will say kinds of rest, or peace. One is temporal, or temporary, the other is eternal. So what is the two kinds of peace? Temporal and eternal. Just part, just part of our introduction, we as Filipinos, we understand that until now we are at war. Our country is still at war of what? We are not yet at peace. We are at war since 1969, I think, until now uh, with the CPPNP and this kind of insurgent. So that is a long, long time war. And until now, our, 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 beloved, our beloved president is still fighting for these insurgents. A lot of war in the world today. And even we are at war, supposed to be with China, but our president, he has his own policy how to ease that war, to have little bit peace with them. And I think even in Nigeria, they have some. They are also at war, at war of many things, as we have. Corruptions, as, as well as a lot of problems. If you look at to the superpowers, we'll go to America. They are putting trillions recently. Mr. Trump is he, he put about 1.2 trillion dollars for their military, upgrading their missiles, whatever uh, capacity, in order for them to be at peace with everyone. 1.2 trillion. And recently, Mr. Japan, or Japanese, they put a lot of money for their military, and now they are in the process of defending their country. They are in, in the process of making, manufacturing a lot of ammunition because they, they end up the so-called, uh, the treaty that they are not, they have their constitution that they are not allowed to do or must produce weapon, but that uh, constitution is already uh, finished and they can do it. They are arming themselves because they believe that although they can rely on America, but it is always better to have. So because they are also at war. At war with who? As we know, they are also at war with China in terms of uh, one of the their islands, San Coco or Sin Coco, I think. And even recently, we understand there is a summit between between Mr. Trump and Mr. Kim Jun U. What does it mean to have a good peace treaty between the North as well as the West and their allies? So the tension in, in North. Uh, in South Korea, uh, North Peninsula, uh, Korean Peninsula is little bit easing because there is an initiative of peace treaty. So people, as we understand from the personal level, what happened? We want peace. Although we are working to have fish. Yeah. yeah? But peace is good for stomach. We need peace for our souls. The Bible says here, find the rest for your souls. So our problem, because we tried always to labor for the fish, not for the peace. 
And please note down that whatever we tried or hard work we do, we could not have peace unless the Prince of Peace gave us that kind of peace. You understand that? Amen. Now, sometimes we are enticed always to have peace, hoping that we have we could have peace. See, in the book of it could not be. Now, we go directly to our text. Verse 28, I'll read it again. Come to me. Now, Jesus is saying to his audience, Come to me. Think about that Jesus is talking to us now. Isipin nyo na lang na si Jesus ay nangungusap sa bawat isa sa ating ngayon. At ang sabi niya, Hali kayo. Come to me. He is asking everyone to come to him. The question is, does everyone come to him? That people on on that time when he said, "Come to me," did uh, did uh, these people they come to him? I don't think so. They come. They don't come actually. Because in verse 25, we let us read in verse 25, chapter 11, it says, At that time, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and rebelled them to little children. Now, this one, this happenings it is not for all it is happens and someone does understand uh, someone did not all understand only some we can look we can read that in verse and last phrase rebuild them to little children there, there are particular people who understand about what Jesus is saying. So not all. And in verse 28, again we can see, Come to me, and and who will come is the one who realize that they are in labor, they are happily laden. You can you can see that verse? Can you can you look at in your Bible? There is the reason why they are coming to them and Jesus is calling them to come because they have their own situation now the question is are you in labor are you in heavy laden kayo ba ay nahihirapan or okay lang ang lahat if everything is okay in your life then you don't need to, to come Jesus that is a very good understanding from these words. Now we just come into holiday. Uh, how many holidays? How many days is your holidays? I have a, I have five days. And I thank the Lord for that five days because I ponder a lot and I talk to a lot of people. And we have even we have even come up with a good uh, meaningful discussion and somehow that relieves me what are my burdens pero kung ang ating holiday or holiday is just passing like this the same thing we are just trying to get some fish and after some time we eat that fish and again we have the same situation nothing changed and we keep on saying oh my life does not change it's the same. So that means, that is all our fault. Problema, or ating problema yan. Because Jesus said, come to me. You are all who are heavily laid down. Now, in, in New Testament, the situation is about something 
causes a struggle of their life. Ang kanilang problema ay may kinalaman sa kanilang buhay na nagpapahirap sa kanilang buhay. Our problem, our situation is the one, the one which is causing us troubles. I just, we just hear brother um, Alex in his, in his simple testimony, he is thankful to God that someone helped him because he has a lot of trouble. And somehow we as church, we help him. That is his problem. Now during, during those times, when Jesus come, he understand the situation of these people. They are in trouble. They are in trouble of their need. People are destitute. Walang makain. People are looking for someone to lead them, but no, they could not find anyone. They are trying to look for someone, but no one, but no, they could not find either anyone. Now, when Jesus come, we need to understand when we come to Him, we realize that we have the need. We have that kind of paghihirap, kahirapan, dahil sa ating mga kasalanan. We need that kind of trials, struggles because of our sins. And when Jesus said, come to me, he is saying, I can take care of you. So does anyone come to Jesus really? If you come to Jesus just because you need some money, that is not enough. When you have full of money, you will just leave yourself as if you are the owner of your life. When you come to Jesus for a healing, and you are healed somehow, after some time when you are strong, you will be run away and live your life to be as if you are the owner of your life. If you come to Jesus as a, a bank because you don't have money and you just withdraw and after you get your money and run away, live your life. No, Jesus is calling everyone because He wants to have that kind of healthy, loving relationship not only for this world and even for up to heaven. So, kailangan po natin maintindihan yun. Nang panawagan ni Jesus ay hindi lamang para sa lupa, kundi maging sa darating na buhay. Kasama natin siya sa langit. Our relationship with Jesus is not only for here, but even up to heaven. Now take note again that Jesus' calling is to those who are in need. Now, we need to ask ourselves, maganda pong tanungin natin ang ating mga sarili. Do I need really Jesus? Can you ask yourself? Don't ask audibly. Just ponder these words. Do I need really Jesus? Maybe it, it does not pop up your mind, your heart. Then think about what happening? What happens, or what is happening in your life today? Ano ba ang nangyayari sa aking buhay? Where I am heading? Where I am going? Do I am really doing well? I will use again the testimony of our brother. He said, "Her eldest uh, sister just passed away." What does it mean to us? For me, I just remember even all my sisters. I have no brother. But one day, they will pass away. And I realized that that is one of my needs. That is one of my burden. How can I help them in a way they will, they will grow in Christ? Or 
when I heard that words that my sister passed away, I am maybe after some time the next. Then when I will pass away, I, where I will go really? So Jesus' calling is very important for us to understand. Christianity is not just keep on coming to the church, but realizing who is who is Christ in the church. By the way, the church, the word church, is came from the word Kairos. Jesus is Kairos, Lord. The Lord brought the church, or we bring by Christ, or Christ brought us in order for us to become a church. Labor and heavily laden. In the last phrase of chapter of verse 28, look at that. And he is be very sure. I will give you rest. We can translate that. I will give you peace. And I would like to draw your attention. Tingnan po natin ito mabuti. Let us look the text carefully. Because Jesus said, I will. What does it mean? That is not just subjective. It is a sure promise. When I realize that I am in need, I am heavily laid down, I am I, I have I have I am in labor, I am in pain, I have the situation that I need rest. And Jesus said, I will give you rest. So that is not that is just not a simple suggestion. He is giving the assurance whoever come to him. He must have rest. Now we can have we, we can have our question. If someone believes that he is Christian but there is no rest, there is no peace, there is something, a huge problem. And the question will arise: who is that Christ you come in or you come? Two. You get the point sa mga Tagalog? Kung ikaw ay kristyano at hanggang ngayon tila baga walang kapayapaan o walang kapahingahan, ang unang tanong agad ay, bakit? At kung lumapit ka na sa sinasabi mo, kung lumapit na kay Kristo, dapat tanungin na natin, sinong Kristo ba ang nilapitan natin? It is a fair assumption or understanding we need to understand carefully because there is no changes in our life if there is no pro proper understanding. That's why Christianity is very critical thing. It is not just keep on coming to the church and eating something and going and there is no changes. No! There must and there should. If there is no changes, my friend, my sister, my brother, then Mr. Peter is also correct. He said, humble yourselves to the Lord to Christ. And we need to really understand who is Christ, whom we are coming. We need to understand, sino bang Kristo itong aking nilalapitan? That's why if you come to this church as the Great Commission Global Ministry stop. No, we are not teaching. Sometimes I have a hard time to pronounce our the name of our church. <laughs> If you come with that uh, conviction that you are in heavily laden, laden, that you are in need of someone, and that is Jesus, and that is Jesus of the Bible, wow, praise the Lord, there is any at war, but we can go on, and he said, I will give you rest. Let us read uh, the verses from 26 to 27. We can understand who is Christ who said, I will give you rest. So that is not subjective. That is an absolute promise. Verse 26. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. 
when someone come to Jesus, realizing that he or I am in need, that is the gracious will of God. Because not all will come to Him. If you realize that you are in heavenly leader, and I keep on repeating myself, if you, if you realize that I need Christ, that is the gracious will of God or the Father. Not everyone will realize that. You get the point? Now, when we are struggling in our heart, that we are doing sin, that we are somehow ashamed to the Lord because we are doing something wrong. Actually, that is good indicator that God is at work in your heart, in our heart. Because if you just don't, uh, if, if you are just keep on ignoring that, or there is no struggle in our heart, so verse 26, it's carefully said, Jesus in his prayer, Thank you, Father. For such your gracious will. Verse 27. All. And Jesus said, All things have been handed over to be my, my Father. What's that? Ano ibig sabihin no? Now, if you believe that Jesus is just a mere Messiah, or He is just a mere Savior, no, it does not work like that. Because here he is saying, I am equal with my Father. Look again the verse we are reading. Because somehow, sometimes we think that Jesus is just a Savior. No, He is Lord. He is God. We need to clear about that. We need to be clear about it. When we come to Him, He is our Lord, our Lord and Savior. And He has the right to punish us in order for us to have that kind of rest. Sometimes the problem of our mind is what? Is we just take Jesus lightly. As if Jesus is so loving that He is not able to punish us. No. Because Jesus is so loving to us. And He is God. The second person of God there. He has every right to chasten the people who come to Him. But first, He will give rest. <laughs> That's the good news. First, He will give rest. Now, I will give you rest. All things have been handed over to be by my Father. Take note. And no one knows the Son except the Father. He is seeing that the relationship between the Father and and, and me and Jesus is what? They have that intimate relationship. No one knows. The word knows. It is just the Father knows this, but it, it, it is not like what we think. I know the Father. No, it, it, that is not what Jesus means. No, there is having a relationship with. So let us have a commentary of that. We'll just go to. To John chapter 17. That no. Okay? In John chapter 17, see? Let us look that verse started in verse. Let me try in verse. In verse 3. Or verse 1. It says here. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you. Verse 2. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life, take note, to all whom you have given him. So the Father has given him a lot of people. And in verse 27, actually, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And he is saying in, in John, authority over all place to give eternal life. Jesus could not give eternal life if he is just simply 
what? A person made Lord. Siya ay tao na ginawang Panginoon. Hindi. Now, verse 3. And this is eternal life. Be careful. And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, to understand the Father who was secretly revealed this to children and Jesus, the Father sent to Jesus to save mankind, sinners like me who are heavily laden. And please note, Christ whom you have sent, verse 4, I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you have given uh, you have given me to do. Now, verse 5. And now, Father, chapter 17, verse 5 of John. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Now, you have a hard time to understand verse 3. Some people suggest that the Father is the true God, Jesus is just a serpent, but in verse 5, seeing, Jesus is saying, glorify me. That, that The glory we are talking about, it, it is not the glory that, uh, who is that lady, a military, he get a gold medal for Philippines. That is not the glory we are talking about here. Ang kaluwalatihan natin pinag-usapan dito ay ang kaluwalhatian ng pagiging Diyos. The glory of being God. The ikum, the ikumunika, ikumunikable glory of God. That is, I will not give glory to anyone. Now, I'll just go down to 17 verse 11. Look at that. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Now, Jesus is saying, the same essence I have with the Father, that I will, is not just a promise, of a Savior but of the Lord. A promise of being Adonai. Being Yahweh. You understand that? Now for me, when I come to Jesus, I need to understand that He is able to give me what? Give me rest. Or give me peace. <clears throat> now we need to look at the two kinds of peace or rest the first is temporary and the second is eternal what do you like? the temporary and the eternal both I like the one who answered both because we are in the same yeah, yeah. conviction. Now, <clears throat> temporary, I just, I just uh, uh, give some illustration. Like, <clears throat> now you are temporary at rest. Rest from the world. Somehow rest from the worries of life. But after this service, you will start worrying a lot. Now your attention is being caught. Looking at me while I keep on preaching, sometimes you don't understand, then worry arises more. But no, I do believe that your worry now is becoming less. So you are, we are in temporary rest. But somehow, temporary rest is, will do something like this. And there is two men, they are just traveling from one place to another place. And while they are traveling, they, they used to travel 
this uh, steam engine uh, train. Now the train are bullet train and there is a hyperloop, hyperloop uh, train. But the old system, you know, this uh, steam engine where they should uh, boil uh, a water and that water after it is becoming super heated uh, uh, water, it becomes steam and that steam will push the, the, the what we call this, either uh, a cylinder to start moving and it is fueled by sometimes it is most of the time if it is external it is fueled by coal either charcoal or different types of coal and there is like an engineer there putting the coal so that is the in the work of the engineer before but now that is the work of some other guy. <laughs> so what happened to these two guys? These two guys are, they are traveling. While they are traveling a long distance, the train are getting somehow some big trouble. And there is some areas where a very high and they can look at down, oh, if we will fall down, it is a very uh, it is one of the highest cliff and sometimes the train is stuck up on that area so people are screaming oh maybe we will be stuck up uh, they will be pulled down but for these guys these two guys they are just relaxed so people are screaming people are putting their words they are worried but they are what happened to you guys uh, we know that this will happen it's okay. Whatever happens, we are at peace. We are, we, our, our, our life is at rest with the Lord. So believe to be, they are Christians. So that is what happened to our life sometimes. There are big troubles we encounter, but we are trying to fix it. But at the end, at the back of our mind, we are. It's okay, Lord. And after some time, because these guys, they are, they are going for a long travel, people are complaining, oh, I have pain in my, on my back, my, my, I have pain with my knee because we are long hours sitting, we could not even walk, and they feel they are sick while traveling. And these two guys, yeah, we have the same, our, our uh, what we call this, our, uh, <coughs> Foot as well as body is so painful, but no worries. After some time, we can just enjoy life or travel even. So there are a lot of tremendous troubles in their life, but still they are find Christ. And there, there, there is a time that the, the captain said uh, during those times that the captain he has no telephone or microphone like we are using now. Hello? See? You can hear, everyone can hear as much as possible. So the captain said, told these guys that we are heading to a very dangerous area. We could, we can just feel the, the, the rains, the water, and we can feel a lot of vibration because this area is so dim and it's so cloudy and we are approaching to a tunnel with this maybe around uh, two hours we are in the tunnel and everyone again is screaming and everyone saying oh maybe we will stuck up here how we can go out what we will do and he said yeah it can be happening but we know that that our our life is in the hands of the lord so they understand the reality of life but they understand also that someone holding at their Life. And a lot of people they are screaming and they say, does not bear any difference. You scream, you don't scream. We will be stuck up if we will be stuck up. But I see after this uh, after this darkest moment, I see at the end that we will see the light. See how they are positive, how they are assured in their life. That is the so-called temporary rest. Now, this is the question. 
Do you have that kind of rest? Do we have that kind of rest? If there is still on progress, yes, that is the same. I am in progress. Sometimes, I am frightened with a lot of problems. Minsan ako ay namung problema sa maraming problema rin. Pero I, it reminds me that I have, I have the Lord saying, I will give you rest. And Jesus, when I come to Him and put my trust in Him, knowing that I am a sinner, I am a sinner that I should be punished with my sins, and because of my sin, I'm not able to handle my life. That I give completely surrender to His will, and completely, completely reliance to His word. So that is the beauty. When we have tempor we have temporary rest in Christ. Although we will suffer a lot of problems in this earth, at the back of that problem, sa kabila ng mga problema na yan ay mayroong kapayapaan. Mayroong kapayangan. There is one more story I just give you a little sum. If you remember, there is a, there is a big uh, ship in the Philippines. Was, it was drawn by a big typhoon. You remember that, that ship? Who, who remember the biggest one? The unang mga naluno. No, no, that is international, only local. Uh, Dunya Pass? Anyone remember Dunya Pass? I think that is the first renowned big ship who were... Now, there is a story, a real, uh, what we call this, uh, a real story, our pastor gave this story. He has a member of the church. When Dunya Pass was drawn or was captured by, capsized by the water during those typhoon, immediately called one of the brother. Because he knows that from Manila they are waiting for this brother to come to, it will go to Cebu and to Surigao. So they are waiting for this brother and he said, oh, what happened? Yeah, I supposed to be in that, uh, what we call this, oh, sorry, the lady. I supposed to be in that uh, ship, but something happened that I I did not I did not uh, able to go to the to the ship. So what happened was his uh, what his husband and two children was in the ship, and his husband is one of the renowned uh, like businessman. They are doing good business. One of his children is almost to be graduated in Cebu, I think, with flying colors. And one of the, uh, it is like uh, the, the children was male and female. The, the male is trying to be a pilot. So almost graduated. But when he said, what happened? So what do you think? And immediately he said, I cried. Why, Pastor, you cried? For the testimony of this sister. The sister said, see, well, praise the Lord because the Lord allowed me to still live. And praise the Lord because my husband go out, go, go through these uh, circumstances and come to the Lord and even of my children. See, for, for him he is almost crushed because this is very big problem for for this uh, sister. But when the sister started saying, yeah, it hurts, but it gives me rest. Now what about when it happened to us? <laughs> no, that's why we need Christ. Because this lady, without Christ, he could not able to sustain such agony. But for her, there is a tremendous temporary rest. The temporary rest is 
anchored with the eternal rest. Now, I will go, I will go to eternal rest. We we'll just go to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Now Jesus is not just a savior. He is Lord. He is not mid Lord, but he was Lord Adonai. He is God. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Just we will Just we will go in this verse. It says here, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. If we will uh, read up to verse 7, it says, the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore the seal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here in Isaiah chapter 6 it says a child is born. Ang batang lalaki ay ipapanganak. But look at in the next phrase, it says, To us, a son is given. A son is just given. Because he is the begotten son. One of his attributes, he is Prince of Peace. We will go to Judges chapter 6 verse 24 as we just read a while ago or in our study that God is God, Yahweh is, you know, the Yahweh is, Yahweh Shalom. Shalom. Do you remember? What does it mean? Peace. 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 He is the Lord of peace. God is peace. God is peace. Hmm. Shalom. So now we could not, we could not have that kind of peace without the Prince of Peace. God is a strong God. He is God of peace. And now He says here, there is a Prince of Peace. Just, to, just take a look when Paul always writes, for example, Paul always writes that the uh, grace and peace be with you. Do you understand what does it mean? So that is the standard greetings of Mr. Paul. But what does it really mean? Because of God's grace, actually, we have peace with God. And having peace with God is through Jesus Christ. Para po tayo magkaroon ng kapayapaan, hindi na natin kalaban ng Diyos, kailangan po muna na tayo ay may kapayapaan mula sa kanyang buktong nana. We could not have peace without the Prince of Peace. I'll just read to you some of the writing of Paul. In chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, let us read this one. Therefore, Mr. Paul writes to the Romans, or Apostle Paul, Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him we have also obtained access by faith in, the, in this grace in which we stand, and we have rejoiced in hope for the glory of God. So what Paul is saying? We could not have that eternal or even temporary peace or rest without, without faith in Jesus Christ. Without submission to Him. Without saying that Jesus, yes, I am a sinner. 
Yes, ako'y nahirapan na nabibigatan sa aking buhay at kailangan ko ng isang hindi lamang tagapagligtas kung hindi isang Lord. We need to understand that we, ko, we can have that eternal and lasting rest or peace that is in Christ alone. And Christ can give that to us. Let us just read one. I think it was read in uh, Brother Juju read this one. Look at that. Just uh, these are the things immediately give us worry. People don't like to be dead. Does anyone like to be dead here? Was that? It did not come. So that means when it comes, even you like it or you don't like it, you have no choice. Correct? So that is the reality. But there is one a reality when Jesus said in 11:25, as Brother Jojo read us, this are or this is one of the truth or the reality of life. People does not like to be there. But we are all going there. We don't know where we will go there. But for sure we will be going to. So I'm not I'm not I am not scaring you. I'm just telling you the truth for us to have that eternal peace in Christ. Suddenly, when I keep on, when I do exhortation about this one, immediately one asks me, Engineer, are you really ready to be dead? Immediately, I told him, Yes, any time of the day. I have that kind of courage, not because I'm courageous, not because I'm doing well with myself. We are the same. You are doing the same. I'm doing sin as well. But by the grace of God, I'm not doing as much as you think. I'm trying because of His grace. We are all sinners. Now I told her, I told her, I told her, sister, you know, I think the question is, we need to ask every one of us. The question is, we need to ask every one of us. I, what I mean is, Kung tinatanong mo ako ng ganyan, dapat tanungin nyo rin ng inyong mga sarili. Because I don't want that I am the only one who is courageous to be to face death. I told her, Sister, maybe the, your question is, are you, you're, uh, do you, you are not scared to be dead as it is, but maybe the question also, I am scared in the process of death. I am not scared to be dead. If now after my sermon I will be dead, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Prisons, oh, uh, immediately I am in the prisons of, of God. But the process of being dead or dying, that is a lot of people, I am, in, included me, I am scared little. That's why when I when I am in the airplane, I am a little bit, oh no, Lord, I hope immediately I will be named. Rather than slowly sinking in the ocean, and, you know, you are trying to get to air, but you could not. But anyway, I am ready, Lord. <laughs> this is the fear of every one of us. But look at this promise. I once was almost dead. I am in the process of being, of dying. But the Lord did not grant it yet. Not yet. Don't so be in hurry. <laughs> 11.25, when Mr. Lazarus is dead, and everyone is mourning, Mary and Martha and their neighbors, they are saying, oh, what happened to Lazarus? And Jesus said, don't worry. What? Don't worry. Why? He is dead for three days or four days. He is rotten already. John 2 verse 25 it says this is what I like what Jesus said 
It is, just, it is not just a mere suggestion. It is not just a mere uh, encouragement, but rather He is giving hope to the hopeless like me. It says, verse 24, let us start in verse 24. Uh, 23. Uh, sorry, we'll start at verse 21. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother will not have died. He has that kind of belief system. He believed that no problem for Jesus. If Jesus is here, Lazarus will not will not die. And we are the same with Martha. We think we are so faithful in Christ, but actually no. Verse 22, Jesus said, but even now, uh, sorry, verse 22, Martha said, but even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. So he's still, he's still saying that I know Jesus, I believe on you, no problem for you, you can do whatever you want. You can rise Lazarus from his death. Now Jesus said to him, your brother will rise. Now he, Jesus is, is still saying, what you seem to me is correct. I am seeing you also that your brother will rise. But look verse 24. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection and on the last day. So now Martha is referring for the last day. But Jesus is referring for the now and for the last day. Verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, do he die, yet shall live. And everyone, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. He asked to Martha, do you believe this? Now Jesus is saying, you believe a lot. But do you believe that when you believe in me, even though you die, you will have life. Now the question in our midst today, ang tanong sa atin ngayon, naniniwala ka ba na kung ikaw ay mamamatay, ikaw ay muling bubuhayin, sapagkat si Kristo ang muling pagkabuhay? Yes. Do you believe that when you die, you will be resurrected because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life? Amen. Yan po yung nagbibigay sa atin ng malaking pagkatakot o malaking walang kapayapaan sa buhay. We are in trouble. And even we used to knock on the door, not now. Okay, not now, but maybe tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but maybe after some time. But sure, everyone will be. Does anyone knows your neighbor, your grandpa is still alive? I have known only my grandpa. I don't know if he, he is my grandpa. His name is Enoch. He did not die. And there is one other guy. That is Elijah or Elisha? Elisha did not go. But everyone after them, even Moses, even Jesus, who have no sin, He died for us to have that kind of eternal peace, eternal rest. Do you want to have eternal rest? Do you have to have that kind of eternal peace? You should have peace with God. And you should have first the Prince of Peace, Jesus. Jesus said, I will give you rest. He is the second person of Godhead. My friend, brother and sisters, brothers and sisters, where are you heading? Are you living your life for yourself? It will not give you rest. Jesus said again, 
I will give you rest. We will have that kind of temporary rest. Anchor to our eternal rest or peace. We will, that, we will have that eternal peace if we submit our life, surrender to Christ. Verse 28, 29, sorry. Next point is, after we give our life to Jesus, rest or peace will continue abound in our life. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, a lot of people, they just, leave, uh, they just look the Bible and go to verse 28. And they like this verse 28. Verse 28 should be read up to verse 29 and 30. That's why we love to read our Bible as a whole, not just a piece by piece. This, one, this is the famous song written by Ribalira or Basil Valdez? Basil Valdez, right? That very famous song about this one. Can we? Can someone give a little piece? Come to me, all of you, and I will give you rest. So it always, in every time when someone dies or died in our neighbors, they keep on singing this one. And even in the Facebook, there are a lot of my friends in Facebook, rest in peace. And sometimes, a lot of them, I, I, I send them a PM, private message. It is my heart felt to tell them, kapatid or kaibigan, there is no peace. There is no such rest in peace. You could not rest in peace unless the Prince of Peace is with you. Unless you realize that you are in trouble with God. Unless you realize that you are seen as worthy to be punished by the Holy, Holy God. There is no such peace. We can have that peace if we understand that we need a Savior, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And that time we can say, yes, we have an everlasting peace. Take my yoke upon you. Now Jesus said, after you come to me, you should learn the principle. Now he is making a case that take a yoke upon you. Now during those times, there is a common work of a cow, or as a carabao, or a buffalo. Uh, there is like, a grinder is made of stone and with a, with, with a liver, liver to, to grind a corn or a soya beans or a wheat or something. So this one, sometimes it is not easy to be posed or dragged by, by a cow. So there should be a two cows. So in order that they will be in uniform, they should have that kind of yoke. Sa amin tinatawag na yugo. So yoke, so the other one will use. So the, the cow will just follow what the master wants them to do. Just to make, keep on rotating and in order to grind the, the corn or whatever to be grind. Now Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. He's saying, you need to take my principles. That mind should be renewed from my mind. That's why we have the words of the Lord. We keep on studying. Kaya lagi tayo nag-aaral ng mga salita ng Diyos. Dahil dito makita natin ang prinsipyo ng Panginoong Isos. We see the principle of Jesus. When we keep on reading His words. And then learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. Learn from me. Jesus is saying... You can learn from me. Jesus is always teaching his people to those whom he loves. If you come to Jesus and if there is no changes of your life, God or Jesus will change it. I remember when I was 12 years old, I, I believe and received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. 
And after some time, when I was about 14 and 16, I start wondering because I was left behind in in the province. Oh, I thought, oh, Nana is not there, Tata is not there, Ati, and I am now living with my uncle and aunties. They are so kind; they could not beat me. So I try to do the homework. I try to do the 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 help that they they should they they should expect from me. Pitch the water bring some wood so after some time I am free so I started wondering but the Lord because he wants me to learn and I and he wants me to learn from him he chastised me there is a great discipline for a believer for a believing Christian if you are believe if you believe Christ and you are not able to stop something wrong in your life if you believe you are a believer of Christ, wait and see. God will, or Jesus will chastise you, chastise you, chastise you. Jesus will discipline you. I just remember my father. We keep on saying, we called him, Tatay, Tatay, please stop smoking. Please stop drinking. He said, no, later. And then the Lord stopped him when we realize that there is a possible cancer in his tongue, when, we re when he realizes his throat is being so husky because of that nicotine, and there is sometimes that said, oh, maybe I, I will be dead. And my, my mom or my nana is keep on saying, yeah, most probably you are almost going to Jesus. But he said, no, I'm so ashamed yet to be dead. And then the changes Jesus wants me to do. And I, I and I have a lot of testimonies. There is a brother, I believe he's a brother. He has about three uh, three sons, all are eldest. So that means he managed to have a concubines. And this is rampant nowadays. But he suffered a lot to learn his lesson. When I ask him, what do you think? You can repeat it. If I can roll back my life, I will never do that again. It's so very, very, it gives me tremendous problem that I almost kill myself. If you put your life to Jesus. Yeah. Revelation chapter 3 verse 19 it says to those whom I love I will trust in them. In Hebrews chapter 6 maybe in verse 12 it says also the same. Because God loves us. He does not want or Jesus loves us. Jesus said learn from me. If you will learn from him he will teach you that he that we will learn from him two things jesus is uh, chastised as uh, is teaching his people one is the soft way the next is the hard way we are being said come to our bible study to learn a lot of people come at the learn, but still we're stubborn that we could not even learn for an another types of things to be learned. But Jesus will teach us in a hard way. That's why we cry a lot. That's why we say, oh Lord, yeah, I'm waiting for the time. As long as we learn. And Jesus even is trying to do to his people. I just remember when I was young, I have a pity because I, as I remember, I think I was four years old or five years old. I told to my tata, tai, why you don't beat me? Because I see my sisters, the the old the, the oldest. I am the third one, the, the second and the first. He beat them a lot because of doing some wrong. So I thought I do wrong also. Why you are not beating me? And Tata told me, okay, next time I will do that. Because what I believe during the early, early, uh, early stage of my life, that because you are my Tata, you should uh, discipline me. No, 
know, where is the problem? Now when I become adult, I don't want him to be to trust in me. And the same in our life today. We don't want that Jesus interfere our life. No, Jesus said, you will learn from me. And I pray that we are learning in him. And he said, I am lowly in heart. I am gentle. And you will find grace of your soul. Look at that. Finally, you see it. So we can have the temporary rest and have that eternal rest and it will grow. Our soul will be completely have rest when we have that mind of Christ. Mind of Christ is in the scripture. I mean, whatever in the scripture, it will be our guiding principle that we will have that rest of your, our souls. Verse 30 he said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His principle is so easy. And of course, in our part, it is not easy. But because Jesus he said, I will give you rest. When we are in Christ, don't think that we are just driving or carrying ourselves, our life. It is now He is the one who holds it. He will, he will be the, the captain of our life. And we can see the changes. To wrap up, the question is, Do we have that kind of rest, the, temp the temporary as well as the eternal rest? We can have the peace when we have the Prince of Peace. If you are really struggling, I have no other suggestion or plea is to know Christ, to put yourself in Christ. The biblical Christ. And I encourage you to keep on coming here, hearing the words of Him. And be our friend. We want we want also to be your friend. We are always trying to encourage you. And maybe sometimes when you are our friend, we are also trying to rebuke you because we love you. Not just always told you about good things. Sometimes we told you, brother, it's not good. That is not correct. Because that's the way we love. And that is, I think, the most loving and gracious thing we can do to our friends as well as our brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, truly, we are looking for that peace. Inahanap namin ng kapayapaan. Inahanap namin ng kapanatagan. We are looking for that peace in some other way around. Lord, Jesus, thank you that you called us to have that kind of peace, that rest. And by your grace alone, we can have that lasting peace with God. Because of sins we have, we, there is no peace in us. And Lord, thank you for that understanding. That because of you, Jesus, if we put our trust in you, if we repent and believe in you, and come to you as a sinner, you can change our life. And even... We will, not be, we will have peace over death, over dying, over struggles of life. We can be rest assured because you said you are the Prince of Peace. You can give the peace that the world could not give. Thank you, Lord. This is all we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen.